I think we already ended up doing a lot of discussion around uh, compliance laws and all that. And thanks, Satish, for that insight, uh, as well as Venkat for what uh, work has been going on. So today's birds of feather, we wanted to focus on uh, some key things. So there is, there has been a lot of uh, uh, what do you say, um, mental unrest that has been going on thanks to various regulations that are coming. So we have the India PDP, we have the non-personal data. And now we have some guidelines coming around data sharing. There is this e-commerce law. Uh, there is uh, something that uh, the Aadhaar Act also says. So there is a bunch of things uh, that are being spoken about at the same time, especially when it comes to uh, the whole data governance uh, and within data governance, privacy as well as the non-personal data and all that. Uh, so, uh, you know, just to clarify one of the things that uh, we've been seeing uh, around the world and we've been speaking about it as well. Uh, is that uh, there is a concept of a national law in which we typically call as the horizontal law. So you have to look at the India PDP as a uh, national law uh, where it is going to be so generic in nature that trying to uh, you know make sense of it or trying to apply it to an industry is going to be a very tough challenge. So there has to be something that will come uh, into the intermediary and that is how the national law works. Uh, so the intermediary is where regulated industries are going to come in. So somebody like uh, RBI for banks and insurance will come out with its own set of rules in terms of how uh, the privacy needs to work. Uh, people like the IRDA, SEBI will come out of their own rules, similar to what we are seeing in the cybersecurity space now. So there is a national IT act and then each industry has its own cybersecurity framework or rules as well, uh, which largely align but gives you more specifics. So uh, as an example, uh, you have a right to delete situation in uh, the India uh, PDPB. So India PDPB may say right to delete is uh, available uh, for uh, users as a right that they can exercise. The RBI may further come up and say, hey, yes, you have a right to delete. However, in a bank, when you go for a right to delete, it will likely be a right to forget and not really delete all the data. If you have an ongoing loan or an ongoing contract or you have an account with the bank, then they will not be able to delete your data. Uh, they may be able to forget you from uh, cross-sell, from sending additional mailers, marketing and all that. And whenever it uh, ends, uh, you may be able to delete all the data or delete with a condition that uh, we need to store certain data for three years and all that. In the way uh, going forward, the uh, same industry or the vertical regulator can also come up with saying, hey, you know, uh, the name of a person needs to be masked. So the India uh, PDP may say this name need not be masked or is not sensitive, need not be encrypted. But RBI may come up and say, no, I want you to mask uh, or I want you to encrypt. So that is where uh, rules differ. And therefore, all our implementations and all need to uh, take care of these configurations differently. Why we thought uh, before we jump into the questions, we should bring this out is because uh, we've been hearing a lot of angst around uh, the whole India PDP implementation and all. And uh, somewhere we realized that you look at a very generic statement in the India PDP and then everybody just wants to try and interpret it and implement, which is going to be a tough call. Primarily because if you see GDPR also, GDPR as per law, and then there is an authority which keeps providing guidance. So unless the authority comes and a lot of the things in the current bill is kind of leaving it to the authority. So unless the authority comes and really starts spelling out, uh, there is uh, a lot of ambiguity that is going to be there, plus the industry verticals that are going to come uh, into this. So having said this and given this as a context uh, to uh, Satish and Venkat and anybody else uh, who uh, wants to answer as well, uh, you know, one of the initial questions and some, this is something that everybody has had in their mind is that we, we currently have so many different regulations that are coming up and speaking about privacy in a way or about data in another way, like the NPD, PDPB. Uh, you now have a report from Niti Aayog which says how data sharing can be done. Uh, you have various state governments, industry verticals, you have the regulators uh, of industry, then you have the certain or the IT Act on the other hand who have their own regulations that keep coming up. What challenges do you see, uh, especially from an India standpoint or even a global standpoint, when you see, uh, when you have data at the core of your business and uh, you have to kind of uh, uh, look at compliances across so many different uh, varieties? 
So, Satish, maybe uh, you can go first and then uh, we can have Venkat and anybody else who wants to contribute as well. Okay. Um, Samir, uh, can you just rephrase the last uh, question you asked? So, yeah. when data is at the core of your business and yeah. uh, you now have uh, India PDP that comes, then you have a non-personal data build that comes and your data is going to be a convergence of both. Correct, correct. Plus, you now when you're working for telecom, telecom as a regulator has its own sets. So you're Correct. working for an insurance aggregate, they have their own sets. So, how do you look at compliance and how do you think this is going to work going forward, especially for the data business? Uh, well, I think last week we discussed on the same. Um, so, for data business, I uh, my, my take is it, it is it is becoming difficult and difficult if you're a uh, especially a third-party data business in this whole this thing. Um, in, in the sense, there is, see, all the tech which you have built, right, it comes at a cost, okay? And especially if you are in data business like uh, Facebook or Google, it becomes as uh, another line item in their cost. But for a startup, these all comes at a cost. And it is not like a, just a initial one-time cost, right? It, it keeps on accruing on a month-on-month -month basis with, newer and newer data set coming out and stuff like that. So that is one but a major inhibition. And we have to somehow adjust the cost on the sales of the data. So that puts it at a little disadvantage in terms of the actual data sales. That is one of the reasons many of these data companies are looking at more of a tool provider rather than being a data provider alone as well, right? Across the, Got it. Across the spectrum. So be it U.S. is still not that strict. So if you look at any thriving data company, U.S. would be the first market there. But in other market, I think it is becoming more difficult with all these. But still, if you have, a, um, I would say, access to a particular niche data set or a very niche algorithm, uh, which you have some IP rights over it or you have some protection over it, then I still believe you can still be in business and charge a premium and kind of accommodate this whole things. But in terms of uh, running a data business, definitely all these laws are going to make your code tougher going on. There is no second thoughts about it. Makes sense. Uh, so like you said, yes, as the going gets tough, we will probably have to find out more workarounds to make sure it happens. Can't rule out business. <laughs> Correct. And I think um, just like what whatever Venkata showcased, right? The yeah. tooling and all has a very big opportunity there. It may not be for data business, for but for any business actually. If you're building a SaaS tool which can help you in this compliance aspect using some tech, then that is that is a great opportunity if you look at it. Yeah, and I guess you just have to make sure that there are enough consumers to avail it as well. Yeah, but hopefully, <laughs> no is uh, I don't know what is his liability clauses. <laughs> <laughs> Venkat, you want to answer that? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I, uh, with one of our customers, I actually signed a contract that says that I will go to jail and my company will shut down. Right? I, thankfully, the, the customer has ended and now we have actual lawyers looking at all the contracts. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, yeah, that is, that is yeah, I think all, sta all startups uh, at some point have done that. All the founders. <laughs> yeah. Uh, many, many times, right? Startups don't have the specialized legal team as well. And if you're running a data business internally, a specialized legal team and this chief data uh, protection officer or however you want to call them, right? Chief security officer. That also becomes... So the founder is everything, no? The yeah. chief legal, the chief found yeah. so data officer, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing, I mean, when I look at um, my uh, customers and the prospects that I'm talking to, right? The cost of data overall, um, the, the complexity of the data systems, the cost of the engineers, as well as the cost of compliance is growing very fast. And the economics of the business is, uh, is, it's not clear that it can support all of these huge costs. The ROI is, is a big question in my, uh, you know, with a bunch of people that I'm talking to. And yeah, I think we have seen that kind of compliance costs uh, coming up for the Sabonis Oxley as well. So it also had an initial very high and then somewhere they started leaning it down. Hey, this is Rohit here. You know, 
I feel uh, uh, good. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Now we. Yeah, can we can we can hear you now. Yeah, this is Rohit. You see, I feel uh, data businesses will be subject to host of compliance requirements, uh, including registration, monitoring of operation, and disclosure application. So this will increase operational and data storage cost, you know, and hinder the ability of, uh, say, especially Indian startups to develop their services. So, you know, it can create per pervasive incentives for these companies to remain small, you know. It could be, you know, I'm just, if you, if you want, I'll explain mm -hmm. this from a proposed NDP bill, you know, because if you see the proposed NDP bill uh, proposes mandatory data sharing by anyone collecting the data above a certain threshold, you know. So under the proposed framework, if you see all these tech companies and organizations, they have to meet currently undefined uh, threshold limit of collecting data or process data, you know. So, you know, this is bound to increase uh, uh, and they, these businesses will be host, subject to host of compliance requirements, you know, like including registration uh, and uh, uh, monitoring of operation and disclosure obligations. So this is, this is definitely going to increase uh, operational data storage cost, you know. Yeah, so Rohit, uh, just one thing, anyway, the NPD is open for a discussion right now. Plus, I think there's a bunch of representations already happening. So, yes, I guess everybody understands there are uh, issues there. Uh, but now I'm, I mean, right now in this forum, uh, we're more interested uh, in understanding that while all these compliances are there, how as companies or as a data business, uh, can uh, people work towards it? So, uh, so before you go forward, Rohit, uh, Venkat, any views there? Because uh, I mean, we started with compliance with a different note, but then it tapered off. So, just wanted to check with you. What is the particular question? The question that I had asked Satish in terms of multiple uh, compliances coming in, uh, how as a data business uh, we can gear up to manage, and uh, is it even manageable, and uh, is it even feasible? He was mentioning, I think, about uh, tools, which is what Satish was also saying. And uh, then we kind of moved off to a different uh, set of uh, answers. So just bringing back the topic. Correct. I, I think in my mind, at least, I'm not so worried about whether the compliance is horizontal or uh, vertical, right? Vertical means you're uh, just like um, what, uh, how... Satish, uh, Satish built out uh, the stack, right? There is a lot of clarity that this is exactly what needs to happen. And the same thing is, for example, uh, the, the same set of rules apply for uh, uh, these account aggregators and things like that. Um, my main uh, uh, concern around all of this is whenever I go into any enterprise uh, environment, I find that it is very chaotic. The data engineers are very indisciplined. The data scientists are indisciplined. The, uh, you know, these analysts uh, export uh, data like crazy into Excel, and we don't know after that what happens uh, to the data. Uh, my main concern around uh, all of this is um, uh, we are dealing with a capacity challenge more than anything else. The people with the with the kinds of mindsets and understanding and the tooling skill to be able to build out all of, all of this stuff. I mean, it is none of this thing is rocket science. We we can if we put our heads together, we can think of processes, tools, and so on. The question is, uh, I when I meet uh, all of the data engineers, I don't have the confidence in them that they can actually think through all of this stuff. Uh, how many Satishes are there in this uh, country, for example, right? Um, so the, the, my, you know, emphasis has tended to be, you know, more on the people and the process and the organization front than on the, the technology front. Yes. I mean, it will help greatly, uh, if the tools are available, community wide tools with embed knowledge and things like that, but, uh, where are the people going to come from? Where are the privacy engineers going to come from? You should tell me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good question. Even I have the same question. That's why we are trying to train as many people as we can so that at least uh, we start building them up. Or maybe like Satish said, uh, build tools more uh, and probably that's the way to go because at least even in security, we are seeing the same thing. Uh, there are no security engineers around. Skills are scarce. Correct. And the uh, other thing is that um, mm -hmm. 
uh, other reason to go down the tools path one i mean i i guess this you know by reading between the lines is that um, there is lack of trust intra organization also whether these processes tools are being applied properly and and so on so one reason they would uh, they want to see tools is that uh, they want a system that is person independent and something that is auditable by anybody in the organization at any point in time yeah sort of so, in a way works without bias works without bias and uh, now um, i i as a ceo are i'm, I'm i feel little more uh, safer than handing this responsibility to my engineer who i have like doubts at, uh, about at the back of my mind agree It's very, it's very interesting. I mean, how this uh, psychology of the organizations also is playing out. Yes, very interesting, really. Uh, Rohit, uh, you were also saying uh, from a cost of compliance point of view. So while these multiple things are coming in, your view was that uh, the cost of compliance is really going to go up. You want to elaborate yeah. on that? Yeah, I mean, if you see, you know, uh, I mean, because all these bills are still and have not been implemented, you know. so uh, i personally feel you know uh, companies will be subject to excessive compliance you know and data sharing framework so when they are subject to this so this is definitely going to increase the operational and data storage cost you know and i'm just saying from a long term point of view you know you could see you see a lot of startups coming you know so they will say it will create per, uh, kind of a perverse incentive for them to remain small you know uh, because uh, i'm just saying from a say if you the proposed ntp bill comes into picture it's, if it becomes a law you know and uh, when the when they talk about volume based threshold you know there's still a lot of ambiguity in that bill so you know this this kind of a, uh, like if you see, talk from volume based threshold for compliance it is going to have the same results uh, which such kind of frameworks have had for india's manufacturing sector you know you know so the firms prefer to remain uh, small because the, they don't want to get into the hassles of you know getting them they would simply want to avoid compliance you know yeah so rather than being the enabler or the facilitator to create a level playing field it actually creates a larger issue for people yeah, yeah. makes sense so uh, so your yeah, related way uh, satish uh, one question uh, that i have is uh, uh, now we are seeing a lot of the compliance related discussion happening from a regulation level but what happens to industries that are not regulated but are still uh, having a lot of uh, data related like when you do analytics for let's say a, a manufacturing company or even to do sales forecasting and all now what happens there and uh, how critical is the whole privacy conundrum uh, for uh, these companies which are not regulated as well well it's it's pretty fragmented summary i'll draw from my experience when i was in my past companies where i was working in oil and gas and uh, um so it is driven mostly by see the uh, most of the compliance is talking about uh, you have around healthcare that is one thing and you have yes. uh, recent our terms on telecom data but if you go around it it is mostly about a data which is related to a person which is uh, at the end of the day the person is the crux the person or a device which is identified to the person but otherwise i think it's pretty fragmented people have their own internal policies sometimes there are vertical level policies which helps you out there uh, but but it is heavily fragmented uh, building a framework for that currently in my opinion would be kind of futile it, it, you should be crossing the bridge when you're there if you're creating a niche for that particular vertical okay uh, venkat any other views on this or you have the same opinion hello no, i think uh, um, uh, there um, the economics of uh, this data business is definitely changing um, whether the pdp law comes or not whether the ndp law comes uh, or not um, worldwide if you look at it uh, uh, the concerns around data are growing across the board with or without the law and uh, lots of uh, consumer driven uh, enforcement is also uh, at play so in all cases what we are talking about is increasing the data costs it is not going to be the playground like it was uh, for the past 5 to 10 years you can't uh, just produce a model 
uh, if you have a data system that is uh, part of your product uh, or your uh, company, uh, it better be defensible. Defensible to uh, internal stakeholders, uh, to your customers, as well as potentially to regulatory authorities. You Nobody can escape that. I mean, the increased compliance cost is almost like a given. I think the uh, question here in my mind is, uh, how many of the current companies and business models will survive this uh, increased cost and how much of it uh, will not? Because a lot of the, the costs have been externalized. Uh, uh, for example, I know a unicorn in this city uh, that is buying uh, data that has been uh, uh, not exactly stolen, but uh, the process is pretty close to it. Right? Uh, because the, the literacy level of the end users is, is very low. Now, if this uh, unicorn were to be uh, caught doing that, uh, the impact on its uh, valuation will be very significant. So those kinds of hidden um, costs are there in many, uh, hidden risks are there in organizations and we don't know um, uh, how this will play out. A lot of it will depend upon the enforcement uh, uh, of the law itself. Interesting. So what in a way you're saying is what ties into what I wanted to ask next also is uh, should, I mean, should businesses be worried about the whole privacy and security thing irrespective of the law or the regulation? So while the law regulation gives some structure, Otherwise, also, it looks like businesses should be worried about it and there is enough fallout happening if you are not going down that path. So it's not a question of uh, if, it's always a question of when. Now. So Satish Venkat, any views you have there? So the thing is, it, it is not just about a fear factor, right, uh, Samir? The thing is, uh, this yes. is also an opportunity to educate the end users in the right manner. Previously, they were taken for granted in terms of collecting their data and uh, flowing it unregulated across layers, across into systems, across companies. So I believe this regulation helps streamline that and user is also much more aware of what he's uh, being used for and what are the services he's made out of. So I believe... Uh, at least the PDP, NPD is much controversial in terms of uh, the data sharing and all these things as Rohit was told. But I believe a PDP kind of law, if you implement it the right way, is actually beneficial and you can target your end users even better than what you are doing before, is what I believe. Of course, there is a cost of compliance there, but I think it is it is done for the wellness of the business as well, you can convert it. No, the thing is okay. that uh, today your uh, data business is global business. I mean, we're sitting in Bangalore, uh, we are pitching to companies in Brazil and Mexico and uh, Hungary and everywhere else. Uh, data business is global business. If PDP uh, does not get passed, very soon we'll be out of the, the global data business because there is a broad convergence. We did a survey, Scribble as a company, we did a survey of uh, these data protection laws across geographies. And this is, there are some differences and so on, but uh, everybody now thinks that uh, data is serious business. I mean, you can't uh, not regulate it. So this that is I happening. agree. Sorry, sorry, go ahead, Venkat. Huh. So one way or other, I think just the strategic and the national competitiveness uh, level uh, from that perspective, uh, PDP is happening. Right, we might quibble about the, the details, uh, but without that, there is no data business. Yes, so globally, we will become a pariah if we don't have this uh, soon. And uh, the way I think it is going now, uh, EU has also uh, scrapped the US privacy shield, uh, which basically means they also don't have the same protection, they are going to have the same privacy impacts as we have. And so, that way, yes, it's, it's something that is on the anvil, uh, whether we like it or not. We might as well take steps to take care of it and also ensure that the law gets passed. So, yes, uh, we are looking, huh, but, uh, yeah. so in the last three weeks, I'll just wait my, with one, one more point. I don't want to occupy too much of the channel also. Uh, no, no, sure. Go ahead. Uh, we have been doing at uh, Scribble in the last uh, three, four weeks is to go through the legal conversations that are happening in uh, US and Europe. And uh, one thing that is uh, there is that they're looking well beyond uh, uh, privacy law, right? 
the uh, data protection, the CCPS of the world are considered necessary, but not sufficient. Now it's a question of yes. what else uh, is, is going to come uh, down the line. So I'm almost certain that it's coming, where there are new regulations coming. And at the same time, there is technological innovations happening. So as always, regulations have always been in the uh, board where they are falling behind uh, technology. And uh, therefore, in a way, technology or uh, the whole business always feels that any regulation that comes in is coming in to curtail me and not really help me grow the business, which is a, a serious thought process that keeps happening. So one of the things you know that I had also been speaking earlier with all of you is where uh, we as a community uh, create standards and also send it to the regulator saying this is one way in which sort of a self-regulation can be done, uh, which helps us in the business <clears throat> as well as helps the country uh, framing the right laws as well so that uh, there's less ambiguity in the whole thing. I don't know how we are going to achieve that, but at some point maybe that will help. Uh, so, uh, I mean, anybody else has questions, any other inputs uh, uh, that you want to uh, speak here, uh, anything that you feel uh, is important enough to pick up, otherwise, uh, you know, we can look at an end to recession. Yeah, I would only say that India needs to implement this PDP bill on a top priority basis, you know. Absolutely, agree with that, fully. You know, NPD and all this um, late, all the compliance can come later, you know, because implementing PDP itself will be a big challenge, you know. But to start yes. with uh, what Satish said, you know, uh, India needs to implement PDP. You know, there are a lot of ambiguity with regard to NDP, uh, this non-data personal bill, but, uh, you know, with a lot of discussions, things can improve, right? But PDP bill has to be implemented on a top priority basis because privacy is going to be a very big thing. And especially for, uh, if you see this post-COVID scenario, even the healthcare sector in India has to evolve. Now, if the healthcare sector in India has to evolve, you need to have a privacy law in place. Agreed. In fact, even the NPD, one of the uh, data uh, types of NPD is anonymized data from personal data. So right. anyways, unless the privacy bill comes in, uh, even the NPD will not have the necessary right, right. requests. And uh, yeah. purely from a business standpoint, I agree. I mean, we uh, working with clients and through their contracts with Europe and all, uh, or even the US, we've been seeing increasingly uh, increasing requirements uh, of how you are doing it. And simply because the bill is not there, uh, the first uh, kind of uh, opinion is that you may not have anything there because you don't have a local law. And it kind of becomes binding. They have to do a lot more justification. So it is just going to help in a business right. standpoint. You, you mentioned about the Niti Ayok. Are you talking about the uh, DIPA or what are the uh, data empowerment business, NPCA generalization or something else? No, no, this is on the uh, PDP uh, portions only. Achha, the privacy bill needs to be there. Dominant? What What is it saying? The uh, which one? The DIPA? The no, you mentioned about uh, something that came out of Niti Ayog, right? No, no, no. So the Niti Ayog was more purely in terms of data sharing. Uh, what I was saying that even if the Niti Ayog or uh, NPD we look at, all of these are still dependent on the primary privacy bill to be passed. Only then it can come in. So the Niti Ayog just, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, whatever I've seen, it simply puts out saying. Uh, data sharing has to be done by APIs and all that. I don't think it is really taking a position. Uh, it's trying to create more of a national framework. But if any other thoughts, I'm happy to hear that. Is this the same as DEPA or some other document? Same as DEPA. Okay, take it. Understood. Actually, DEPA only, not same as. <laughs> okay, okay, take it. So that must be impactful for you in the data business, right? Well, actually, that was a little more targeted towards uh, NPCI and uh, UPI because payment single vendor market, that is not good. So they want to generalize that. Uh, that's how I, I read it. Um, uh, for that kind of uh, data sharing to happen, uh, there needs to be a uh, regulator and uh, uh, coordinating body. Because uh, it is now uh, the, the essentially they're in creating an interoperability between like 
like uh, thousands of organizations uh, so i don't i'm not seeing depa being extended to every other uh, uh, domain i don't i don't see how how it will happen i uh, my I, uh, reading I, is I, it is going more in the lines of the uh, aadhar portion than anything else uh the way they are trying to put aadhar is the way they are trying to create uh, use depa to create that uh, central infrastructure as well so yeah, i agree with you i don't think it will go beyond uh, too much or it may become a position paper but it's more within the government rather than impacting the private businesses historically india does not have this uh, uh, community led uh, standards development like ietf and things like that the the company cultures and things and the people um, who are so resume driven are not as uh, excited even if there are contributions to the community standards from india it tends to be to this international standards uh, so i'm yes uh, not sure how how this will play out yeah i think this is something that we need to uh, look at uh, because uh, at some point so whether we become a local chapter and then use that to frame the community or we use the data security council type of thing to create uh, our own bodies but uh, i have a feeling that the amount of uh, innovation and development that is happening here plus the kind of products we are speaking out within india it's best that we do it uh, sooner rather than later because uh, it's going to help us in the effort as well to make uh, the whole regulations thing easier and also the regulators to understand our position yeah that's i agree to that uh, venkat uh, community driven thing is very very weak in india uh, for the, in any of the items actually unlike the europe is far ahead in that especially the scandinavian countries but india i believe is very backward in that 